inspiring you to set the marketplace ablaze in partnership with an awesome and limitless God. This is the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast, and this isn't business as usual. Here's your host and Chief Fire Igniter, Shay Bynes. Welcome back to the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. This is your host, Shay Bynes, and our goal here is to inspire you to operate your business completely yielded and in partnership with our awesome and limitless God. Being a kingdom driven entrepreneur is not the same thing as being a Christian who happens to be a business owner. A kingdom driven entrepreneur is motivated by seeing an increase of the kingdom of God through the work that they do in business. And they're propelled forward by operating from the truth of Matthew 6 and 33. They seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, knowing that all things will be added. So that is why we are here. And I'm super grateful that you've joined us today. Today's episode is sponsored by Jennifer Reyes. Jennifer takes away anxiety from selling your coaching services. As you grow your business, this theme song may try to sneak in. Every day I'm hustling, hustling. (laughs) The hustle of getting new clients may try to tempt you, especially if you're not great at sales. But instead, Jennifer invites you to go at a pace with God's grace. She moves you from uncertainty to unshakable confidence, which, by the way, has nothing to do with you. You'll walk away with clarity in 20 minutes or less, knowing who you're called to serve and why, and 90% or higher enrollment rates for your services and offers. Join Jennifer's free interactive class, Uncertain to Unshakable in Your Faith, Life, and Business at jenniferreyes.com. And that is spelled R-E-Y-E-S, Reyes. You can also click on the link in the show notes. And now on to today's guest. My guest today is Dub Alexander. Credentialed by the United Nations, Dub specializes in bringing kingdom solutions and strategies for nations to governmental officials around the world. He is also the founder of School of Kingdom, where he is training kingdom leaders on how to implement the strategies of heaven into the systems of the world. Dub is also the author of a book I really enjoyed reading last year. It's called From the Cult to the Kingdom. It is a fascinating book that captures his story of receiving Jesus as a savior, as a child, of two atheist parents, uh, to growing up in a abusive cult, to growing in kingdom revelation and identity. Uh, We're going to talk about a bit of that during this conversation. You'll hear about how he transitioned from the Christian music scene to global government with no history, education, or experience in the realm of government, but a powerful word and an invitation from the Holy Spirit. You'll also hear about the value of verbal engineering. It's how Dub takes prophetic insight and translates it into practical and implementable strategy as a consultant. And you're going to hear about the power of adding skill to your gifting. I don't want to share anything else. Just listen into this episode. There's so much goodness in here. And frankly, I could have spent a whole additional hour with Dub talking about all the kingdom things. So (laughs) listen in and enjoy my conversation with my friend, Dub Alexander. Dub Alexander, what is going on, brother? What's going on, my friend? It's good to be with you today. Well, it's good to have you here. Uh, You and I, we just met on social media. I don't even know when, maybe a year ago, maybe a little bit more than a year ago. I kept hearing your name pop up in conversations. And so I was like, all right, we'll connect on social media. And then I watched in pure hilarity, um, just, your, <laughs> just your post, but I also could get a sense of your heart for the kingdom and just for what God's up to in the marketplace and, and all of that. And so I found that to be uh, super good, super encouraging. And so we finally got a chance to meet after a bit of time of just online connection. And so I'm glad that you are here and I'm looking forward to uh, chatting more and hearing more about your story. So thanks for joining me. Yeah, likewise, my friend, uh, you've been connected with so many of my good friends that I've watched you for a while and love what you're bringing uh, to multiple places, uh, you know, as far as bringing kingdom reformation, uh, obviously, especially in the business uh, business sphere, but in other places as well. And so I've been looking forward to getting to connect with you. You finally uh, uh, made it happen, reached out, said, hey, why aren't we talking? I was like, I don't That's know. Right. And so... <laughs> We connected. I think we're and, uh, supposed to a, talk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> had a couple of great conversations, yes. and uh, you know, uh, oh, and you know, 
we've got the kingdom thing in common and we love to laugh. I've got a core yes. value that if I can't laugh, I'm not going. And so we yes. got to have fun. The kingdom should be fun. That's so right. Here we are. So here we are. I'm trying now. If I have this wrong, totally, totally just say you got it all wrong. But I think that I read either in your book or on a Facebook page, post or something that you freestyle rap. Is that true? Or did I make that uh, up? No, back in the day, I, I was in the rap scene pretty heavily. And uh, so, yeah, I did the uh, the Christian rap circuit back in the day uh, and uh, had a, you know, a respectable career in that yeah. before I shifted over into government. So kind of a okay. crazy story. But yeah, I love But do you hip-hop. freestyle, though? Do you freestyle? Uh, I did back in the day. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I love your past did a little tense. bit of battle rap. So I love your past tense. Let me ask. Let me tell you why that, that thought had popped up. This is why. So. The day that this episode goes live happens to be my birthday. And uh, so I was like, how fun would it be like to get like a quick bar, like like two lines or something that give like a <laughs> birthday shout out because, you know, a kingdom birthday shout out or whatever. Can you deliver that? Like two lines? Yeah, like two. For, listen, I don't want to even I don't want to put any restraints around you. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know, that should be doable. So, <laughs> you know, if I'm on here on a podcast with the famous Shay Bynes, it's her birthday. She's left another year behind. You know, she's famous for shining in a lot of different areas, but the best is the grace over grind. I got that book on my shelf <laughs> over here to the left behind, <laughs> not to it. be mistaken with the left behind series <laughs> uh, with bad eschatology for all of those who hear me. It's time to move forward to a victorious vision and uh, to advance the kingdom daily. See, that's yours and mine's mission. <laughs> that was really good. I'm so impressed. Thank you. Thank you so much. See, that was that was a, no a great birthday, a great birthday gift. To me. So thank you. Thank you. The birthday gift in advance. You see how I did that? I love it. That's it. It was a prophetic birthday gift. It was prophetic so. birthday gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. OK, so. I want to talk a bit about your background. So, in fact, this was this was the catalyst that had me reach out to you because you had released this book last year and it was about your story. And I was like, oh, let me go check out his story because I find him to be intriguing. And I've, I've got friends that are his friends that he works with and stuff. I read your book all about your story in two, two days, like in two sittings, wow, because it was really really compelling, very interesting. And so I felt like I had an opportunity to get to know so much about you. So I'm like, okay, at this point, like we just got to connect. So I, I have to start this conversation by having you share a bit about your background and how you even came to came into relationship with Christ and how you came into kingdom revelation, because it is quite a unusual, but really kind of awesome story the way God orchestrated all of it. So. Oh, come on. Well, thanks for uh, getting the book and checking it out. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And uh, man, it's a, it has been a crazy ride. You know, my introduction to Christ was uh, through what I like to call the bad news, <laughs> which is kind of the, uh, you know, the primary evangelical tool of, you know, uh, modern evangelical Protestantism. And, you know, as our uh, Lord and Savior Jesus said, go ye therefore unto all the nations and share the bad news. And <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, that's most of our evangelistic training. And so I was an 11 year old boy. My parents were atheists at the time. And uh, an 11 year old friend of mine came up, you know, and with the best of heart, best of intention, you know, he was, uh, you know, in the words of Nacho Libre, Libre uh, worried about my salvation and stuff. And so he opened with, uh, hey, man, have you ever heard about hell? I was like, no. And so, <laughs> right, that's the intro to the bad news, right? So he, he fills me in about hell. And I'm like, oh, man, like, first of all, I had no idea any of this was going on. And this sounds bad, right? Like, right. I don't know. I don't know much at 11, but I'm pretty sure that this is not good. And uh, then he's like, you know, but if you ask Jesus to be your savior, then when you die, you go to heaven. I'm like, well, <laughs> what's heaven, man? And he points up in the sky and he's like, well, it's up there. And you like sit on a cloud and sing to God all day. I was like, all day. He was like, all day. I was like, for how long? He said forever. I was like, oh man, I mean, that's not a whole lot better than hell, but I guess it's a little better than hell. I, I guess I choose that, you know? And uh, so the issue with that style of evangelism of, uh, you know, leading with the bad news is it introduces you to an angry God who's right. mad about your sin, who wants to throw you in hell. 
But luckily, Jesus threw the block. No, daddy, you know, and uh, took the wrath of the father upon him so that he could stand your sorry tale. <laughs> and so uh, that was my uh, my sad introduction to the kingdom. And, uh, you know, that produces orphan mentalities, orphan right. hearts. And so I'm thankful because, you know, I, you know, I prayed the prayer. I was born again, uh, but I still had an orphan heart, had an orphan mindset because I had been introduced to an angry father rather than a good, kind, loving Heavenly Father who had created me with an identity, purpose, and destiny, and uh, was looking for an introduction uh, so that we could live life together. Yes. Oh, my goodness. That is a really hilarious, sad, but wild kind of way. (laughs) But yet here we are, right? So it was was your introduction. You said, listen, hey, that sounds being on clouds, singing all day sounds- lame. Yeah, like that sounds, you know, that sounds kind of lame, but better than what you just described as hell. So, hey, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> we'll do this. Now, I, we can't bypass. OK, you said you're so your parents were atheists. So now you have said yes to Jesus and have but also have this kind of orphan mindset going on because it's like, here's angry dad who I do. <laughs> Yeah. Now, so what, how did this then kind of develop for you and in a family of atheists? So how did this work? Yeah. So my grandfather was uh, a Church of Christ preacher. Okay. And then um, I guess my, my mother had a really bad experience. Uh, it was a pretty legalistic uh, church within that denomination that she was a part of. And so she was just like, I'm out on the whole deal. Um, my father's parents were kind of, you know, the, uh, the Easter Christmas Baptists. And so he just didn't really see much use for it either. And so they were just, you know, uh, they were hippies and just like, Hey, you know, that's a bunch of foolishness. And so, uh, but at the same time, around the same time frame that uh, my friend led me to the Lord, his parents were working with my parents. And, uh, so they began to change their mindset and shifted from atheism into believing that there was a God. Uh, but the issue was that this family uh, went to a kind of a, I call it Amishish uh, cult down in Waco, Texas, not the Branch Davidians. Uh, it was, uh, I mean, it's kind of odd that Waco has two cults, but uh, <laughs> it did. <laughs> same time frame, same city, right? Like what in the world is going on down there? But, uh, uh, you know, there's a group, uh, they're still down there today. Now there's about 1,200 of them. At the time, there was about 600 it's oh, called wow. Heritage Homestead. At the time, it was called Koinonia Christian Fellowship. Uh, they change their name every time they get in trouble with the law. But <laughs> <laughs> sad but true. And uh, it's, a, it's a group of people that live in a community and like you know pretend to live off the land and you know do Amish things. And you know the women all wear the long dresses. You know they're trying to trying to make ankles sexy again. And uh, you know the men are wearing the straw hats and uh, you know farming with horses on the weekends. And so. Uh, my parents ended up, uh, you know, we started going down there on the weekends. And the crazy part of that story is that at the time we were living in Oak Cliff, uh, Dallas, Texas, which is inner city uh, Dallas. And uh, we were the only white family. That's why I have such an affinity for hip hop culture, all things hip hop. And uh, yet on the weekends, we're driving down to Waco and hanging out on this uh, this farm type deal. And I'm doing Amish things, you know, and uh, you know, throwing bales of hay up to Josiah on the wagon and picking up <laughs> those behind a horse, you know, that's plowing and hating my life. And uh, it's, what a uh, wild now, dichotomy going on. So strange. It's like a uh, weird Al Yankovic's remix of Coolio's Amish paradise, <laughs> gangster paradise into Amish paradise. Right. So now my sisters are like wearing long dresses. They're not able to cut their hair. And so my friends start calling us the little house on the prairie. And uh, it was it was rough times for Dub, but I made it through. But you made it through. <laughs> So what was the breakthrough point where you go from, all right, so I'm in kind of a, I'm kind, of, kind of in a cult. I'm not sure whether you recognize that you were in a cult or not, but you're kind of in this cult. You learn about Jesus, but you've also learned about an angry father. But then there was, what was the, the catalyst for kingdom revelation for you? And then coming into a healthy identity of who you are in Christ, you know, then what you were going to do from that place. Yeah, what was the catalyst? So- We'll give you kind of like the highlights along the way. And so um, I had a an odd passion for scripture. And so I would, uh, you know, the, the cult leaders gave my parents Bibles for all of us, but they told them, hey, you know, you shouldn't read it till we read that part with you and explain to you what it means, you know. 
And, uh, but I was the rebellious son in the family. I'm number five out of 10. I would hide in the closet and I would read the Bible. And so, you know, at 11, I read the whole Bible, read it several times after that. And uh, I developed, you know, a relationship with the spirit of truth uh, through the scriptures. And so uh, when they would try to indoctrinate me with this foolishness, you know, there was just something in me that was like, man, that's just not true, you know? And, uh, I, you know, I, I definitely have had my own journey of coming out of religion, but uh, the crazier stuff, like it would just never land with me. And so uh, I ended up running away from home when I was 16 and uh, met an amazing family who was going to Dallas Baptist University. Uh, they were uh, uh, Baptist youth pastors. They ended up taking me in, became my family. My daughter's named after her. And, and so they, they, to this day, are my family. They're amazing and so, you know, I left the cult life and, uh, uh, you know, at this point, my youth pastor is my hero. So I'm like, right. man, I'm going to be a youth pastor. So I go to a small independent fundamental Baptist Bible college. Uh, I always say that I was the fun. They were the mental. <laughs> and uh, even there, I didn't do too great. I'd always be sent to the president's office for asking questions and stuff. I was like, what's going on here? Uh, and so, you know, my transition from there was kind of into the non-denominational, light charismatic realm. Uh, where, you know, I was uh, doing the music scene with the Christian rap and rock, and then I would lead worship on the weekends. And uh, that's that was kind of my realm for about 10 years. And then as I got around healthy prophetic culture and began to understand what it was like to perceive communication from the heart of God for myself and what Holy Spirit sounded like to me, uh, Holy Spirit began to, uh, 10 years ago, last October, wake me up every morning asking uh, what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? What is the kingdom? Wow. And um, so I, I asked everybody, I was like, well, they didn't talk about that in Bible college. So I don't right. know what the kingdom is. So I would ask yeah. people and uh, uh, nobody knew, but luckily I found uh, Dr. Miles Monroe's book, Rediscovering the Kingdom. And I was like, these so are the answers I have been looking for. And that was my introduction into kingdom revelation. Wow. It's so interesting. So you're being woken up daily with a question. Yes. What is the kingdom? He's like, I'm inviting you to explore something that you need to know. And so you said yes to that. And you, but what's interesting is you're like, I, you found that you ended up finding the answers in the Miles Monroe book because everyone around you, what kind of answers were you getting? So were people not answering you or were they giving you answers that you're just like, eh, I don't know about that. Yeah. So kind of the, the main answers that you'll still find today in most yes. Western Protestant evangelicalism is, well, it's either heaven it's the church or it's the family of God. And, you know, all three of those components are a part of the kingdom, but they in no wise encapsulate the fullness of the kingdom. Yeah. And so it was, they were extremely uh, dissatisfying responses for me. And so I just kept looking. It's because you're such a rebel. (laughs) That's it. (laughs) (laughs) That's so good. Okay. So then now how old were you at this time? Uh, So I had just turned 30. Okay. So you just turned 30. Okay. So now you're reading Dr. M- Miles Monroe's book. Yes. And okay. So what comes out of that? Like, what were you doing at that time? And then what was next? Yeah. So at the time, you know, I was still, uh, still involved in the music scene. Okay. I was leading worship. Um, I was an associate pastor at a small church in a, in a, a small Texas town. And, um, you know, I, I just, once I caught a taste for the kingdom, I was like, oh man, this is my jam. This is what I've been looking for. And so yeah. I just began to uh, just consume everything on the kingdom I could find. And uh, from, uh, from Dr. Miles, I found uh, Lance Wallnow, who back mm-hmm. in the day, you know, was really putting out some amazing uh, strategy around what it looked like for the kingdom to advance in practical ways. I always call Lance the, the mad scientist of the kingdom. <laughs> and uh, from Lance, I found Chris Valentin and kind of the Bethel stream. And, and so that was kind of my advancement into uh, finding other kingdom people. Yes. And so um, I, I tried to advance the kingdom uh, within the church that I was a part of. And, you know, looking back, I was probably a little zealous and, yeah. and could have done it in a, a wiser fashion, but it didn't work out so great. So I was like, you know what? <laughs> I've still got, uh, you know, opportunity, favor, you know, et cetera, in the music scene. So I'll just take it into the music scene. And that okay. was my plan. <laughs> and then the Lord kind of sidelined me with uh, a prophet showed up and said, hey, Dub, God is remantling you for government. And I was like, well, I don't know anything about that realm. I don't have any history in that. I don't have any education in that. But Lord, I'm up for whatever it is. 
And uh, Holy Spirit said, you know, Dub, you may not know anything about the governments of man, but you know the kingdom very well. And the kingdom is my government because the kingdom is familial in nature, but governmental in structure, a royal family that is meant to rule and reign on earth. And he said, so whatever man's government is brought to you, just shift it to align with my way of doing government and you'll have the answer. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. And so I was up for it. Wow. Okay. So then, so he gives you this word around government. So where did the opportunities show up for then for you to begin to walk that out? Yeah. So uh, just a few months later, I got an invitation to go meet with a, a first family of an African nation. And uh, I was told, Hey, you need to get, get your suits and get your passport. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm up for it. The issue was I didn't own any suits. And so, uh, <laughs> But I did have a sweet 79 Monte Carlo lowrider, uh, like the one in training day. So I yep. had to sell the lowrider and buy suits. It was a sad day, but, uh, you know, Joseph had to change his raiment to go in before Pharaoh. And so I was like, hey, this is my Joseph moment. So bought the suits and went over there. And, uh, you know, it was at that trip that I found myself sitting at tables with, you know, the minister of tourism, minister of agriculture, you know these different governmental officials. And I experienced a few things in that scenario. Uh, but one of the most important is that my prophetic gifting went to the next level. And one of the things that uh, my spiritual father and the prophetic Dana McCollum always says is that uh, the gift of your prophetic will operate everywhere all the time for everybody. But there is a place at a specific time with a specific people that the gift of the prophetic will go to a whole nother level. And that's an indicator that you are within your metron. Mm. Uh, metron of canon is Greek for measure of rule. In other words, it's the place of convergence that God has designed the gift of the kingdom that you are to the world to show up. Yes. And so I was experiencing it in that place. I was like, oh man, like I'm, I'm getting, you know, prophetic strategies for these conversations that they're having, you know, trying to, uh, you know, negotiate things and navigate issues. So I was like, wow, this is really my metron. And I, I realized, okay, this is where my prophetic gifting thrives at the highest level. But I also was aware, wow, there's a whole skill set for global government that I'm completely unaware of. I don't understand protocols, uh, seating arrangements. I don't know the titles. You know, I, I don't know how to study so that I right. step into a nation with cultural awareness and and all of these things. And uh, luckily I adhere to, it's better to be thought a fool than to open one's mouth and remove all doubt. So I didn't make an idiot out of myself that trip, but I was like, right. wow, this has revealed a skill set that I'm lacking that I must develop in order to be effective where it is that God wants to take me. And so that's uh, when I got good. home, that's what I went after. Okay. So I want to dig into that a little bit more because some people listening to this are like, well, what does that look like? What, what do you mean? So when you were walking in this room and you've got Ministry of Tourism, you've got all these folks in this in these areas that you don't know anything about in a nation that you don't know a whole lot about, if anything about what was what was happening in those moments? Yeah. So, um, you know, I was. Uh pretty much trying to stay out of the way, uh, uh -huh. stay quiet and just observe, learn what I could from the, uh, from the opportunity that I had been given. And I realized, you know, that was the beginning of me catching that, you know, the difference between favor and force, which really came to that revelation came to fruition a couple of years later when I was at a meeting in Washington, DC, and I was sitting at a table with a bunch of uh, high level players from different nations and a billionaire with a B <laughs> walked in the room <laughs> And people scrambled to make room for this gentleman at the table. And the Lord said, Dub, you're here because of favor, but that man is here because of force. Mm. And he said, my children are so infatuated with favor that they are missing the point that favor is to position you to be able to apprehend force. You know, as they, the kingdom advances violently and violent men lay hold of it by force. And so, um, you know, I was just like, wow, like here's this level of favor that you can walk in, right. but favor will put you in the room, uh, but force will let you walk into any room that you want and allow you to stay there. And so I was like, wow, there are things that must be developed within me so that I don't stay in the arena of flash in the pan, right? One right. hit wonder, like... Uh, where there are, there are these little moments where I get to experience convergence, but I want to live in a place of convergence. And for me, yeah. the definition of convergence is when the fullness of your identity and the fullness of your purpose 
meet and converge in the place of your destiny. And a working definition for convergence for me is not having to do anything that I was not made to do. Yeah. Doesn't mean I don't do things I don't enjoy sometimes. It doesn't mean I don't do things that are hard, right? <laughs> right. But I'm getting closer and closer to every moment of every day, only having to do things I was made to do. Yeah. And it's really in my heart to uh, equip people to, in their kingship, yeah. to be able to apprehend a lifestyle of convergence where we are all fully actualized in the idea that God had for us when he created us. Yes. And so, uh, yeah, I don't even think That's, I'm answering your original question well, right now, but <laughs> well, we are going to get to that in a second, up. because what I, what, at least what I was getting from that is that you're sitting here in these rooms and you're like, God's teaching you while you're in this room. So you're in this room and you're observing and then God's teaching you while you're in the midst of these people. And Absolutely. so, and I suspect, but this is, tell me if I'm wrong, that he was also not only teaching you about, about your own assignment and how to operate and kind of teaching you in just like kingdom truths for you. But if you said that your prophetic gift, we were realizing that that was operating at, at a, a different level there. I'm suspecting that there was also things he was speaking to you about concerning the things that they were speaking about and giving you wisdom or insight concerning what was happening in the room that you would not have known otherwise. Is that what was going down from a pr prophetic perspective? Absolutely. And so when it comes to the prophetic being impactful for the sake of the world, yes, it's so important to realize that, that God loves to, to share with people strategies that have the ability to become solutions that makes life better for humankind. Yeah. Because it is the kindness of God or the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. So when you meet kind of the old covenant style prophet, uh, you know, that picture and then what we see in the Old Testament, which is a record of an old covenant that we are not a part of, <laughs> uh, you know, we see this angry, judgmental, wrathful, you know, whenever God's speaking, it's mainly because he's ticked about sin and he needs people to clean up their act. And, and that has nothing to do with us. We are a part of the better covenant which is about introducing a world uh, to the kindness of God, the goodness of God, because that is what leads men to repentance is what, you know, the scriptures say it's the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. And so uh, the prophetic Intel should be partnered with apostolic intelligence that produces uh, reformational implementation that really shifts things and changes things on a practical measurable level. Yes. It meets the issues that mankind is experiencing, uh, makes life better for humanity. And in all of that, they are being introduced to the practical, tangible manifestation of the goodness and the kindness of God. Yes. And that will lead men back to the heart of the good, kind, loving Heavenly Father, which is the administration of reconciliation that you and I have been called to. Uh, I love that the Greek word for reconciliation, one of the primary definitions of that is the restoration of an old friendship. That's and good. we are living in the era of the administration of reconciliation. And that restoration of friendship has nothing to do with God. Man never ceased to be God's friend. Even when Judas came in the act of betrayal to Jesus, Jesus says, do what you have come to do, friend. <laughs> and it's about reminding mankind that God is our friend. Yes. And that he never ceased to view us as such and to restore mankind's understanding of God, the picture of the cross. Uh, not Jesus did not go to the cross to change God's mind about you. Jesus went to the cross to change our mind about God. The cross is not a picture of what God does, but rather a picture of who God is. Other giving, self-sacrificing love. And so that's what we have the opportunity to do. And there's no better way to do that than in providing practical solutions yes. to the issues of the world so that mankind can experience the goodness of God. That's so good. So I'm curious to know in the area of government, so just like your partnership with God, what that has looked like for you, what are some of the, what have been some of the keys for you to be effective in the space of government? to do exactly what you just described? Mm. So for me, um, I've experienced that shift from favor to force. And so I've been working with and prophesying over 
uh, covertly <laughs> over uh, you know global leaders for about five six years now, and uh, you know working within the United Nations uh, for the last four to five years. With the last three years having my own credentials, and so that was that experience of for me. You know what must I do to shift from favor, being invited into the room, to shifting into a place of force where I get to choose what room I walk into, and uh, you know my only goal of being in that room is to release truth. Yes. And I like to say that truth is truth. It doesn't have to wear a Jesus t-shirt. Come on, somebody. <laughs> because <laughs> truth is not a thing, but rather the person of Jesus. Yes. And when truth is released in a room, when the goodness of God is released in a room, it makes people free. It makes yeah. all people free. Yes. And so getting to sit in those rooms and to take the strategies of heaven and verbally engineer them. And what I mean by that is pull the Christianese out yes, <laughs> <laughs> and be able to present the core message of that prophetic strategy in the style of the king who is in front of me, whether yes. he's a Buddhist, a Muslim, an atheist, or maybe a Christian, you know, yeah. so that all for the sake of the people, uh, the strategies of heaven and the styles of the kings for the sake of the people so they can experience the goodness of God. That's my mission. Yeah, uh, and that's why I'm there. That's why I show up. That's why I do what I do, and the the piece of being able to pull Christianese out is so important. I remember being in a room, and there was a, a few other people there that I was not associated with, and one of the other individuals in the room uh, apparently is a prophet, and uh, he begins to prophesy to this president, and he tells him that you know. And it was a good word. I was like, well, that's a good word, right? But <laughs> right. the way he phrased it, he tells this gentleman, uh, this president who isn't a believer, that God wants to birth something through him. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you are not in our charismatic stream and you're a dude and another dude that you don't know tells you that a God that you don't believe in wants to birth something through you, that is hashtag hella awkward, okay? <laughs> so this dude gets escorted out and I'm like, bad move, bro. You know, I remain in the room. Why? Because I understand the value of verbal engineering. Right. <laughs> that God wanted to get that message across. Yes. Yes. But there's a way to present truth in a way that the orphan kings of the earth, the pre-believers can receive the strategies of heaven for the sake of the people. And so I'm passionate about verbal engineering and, and understanding how is it that we must develop our prophetic gifting into a practical skill so that it can be leveraged to see the kingdom advance in real tangible ways. Yeah, that is that is so, so good and so important. I'm trying I'm, I'm having this flashback. And so if I have this wrong, let me know. But I just have this recall and I believe it was from reading your book where God was giving you a strategy. Maybe it was for a nation concerning the fathering, almost like there was a solution around fathering that you then had to verbally engineer in a way that made sense. Is that your story? It is. Yes. So uh, as I went, once I got home from that initial trip to uh, a specific nation in Africa and I, I had realized, wow, there is a whole side of myself. You know, I'm not going to be able to accomplish everything that I need to accomplish just through skill. I've right. got uh, just through gifting. Sorry. But I must develop skills to partner with that, right? I've got the prophetic intel on lock, but I need that apostolic intelligence to partner yeah. with it. And so, you know, there's there's uh, diplomacy courses out there. There's uh, statesman courses out there, et cetera. And um, so as I was doing some statesman training with a gentleman who happens to be a kingdom guy, at the end of that, he said, you know, Dub, if you want to impact global government for the kingdom, you need to pick a global issue provide a kingdom solution on a covert platform. And if you'll do that, that will open all the doors for you. Wow. So I said, yeah, man, I'm up for it. And I was like, uh, how, do, how do you decide? Like, and he said, well, what makes you angry? So immediately I said, well, I hate fatherlessness. And he said, well, that's a global issue. So find the kingdom solution, present it on a covert platform, and that will open all the doors for you. He reiterated that. And so, you know, I went to the drawing board. I was like, okay, when a father is not present, what is missing? And for me, that has to do uh, with provision, protection, and promotion or empowerment, right? And so the level of protection that you can lend to someone is predicated upon your proximity to that individual. 
the level of provision that you can provide to someone is limited to your personal resources. But when it comes to promotion and empowerment, that is unlimited. So then my next step in the process was, okay, so what is the strategy for being able to identify those around you who have experienced fatherlessness, regardless of what age they're at now, realizing that they've probably lacked in the area of provision, protection, and empowerment at some point in their life. And so how can I provide empowerment for them? And so the strategy that I came up with is uh, what I like to call trust, encourage, champion. And really, because this is what I experienced from my youth pastor, Mark Urquhart, at 16 when they took me in, you know, he chose to trust me before I deserved it. That's a big deal. You know, I think we as powerful kingdom people, it's a core value of mine. I always extend uh, what I call uh, a level three trust to everyone that I meet. Then they have the ability to build that or, you know, to destroy it. (laughs) Right. Uh, but, (laughs) But I always extend a level of trust before someone has earned it. Um, And so you've got to trust individuals before they deserve it and then choose to intentionally encourage them and then choose to leverage whatever platform you have on their behalf in order to present them, to champion them to the world, to be, you know, for them what their father should have been. And so, you know, that was the the system that I developed and presented, uh, you know, uh, to the world as, uh, look, this is a solution to fatherlessness. If you'll identify yes. those around you who have experienced this and you'll leverage the trust, encourage, champion method, you're going to create change in people's lives. And it was really well received. And, and exactly what that gentleman said it uh, came the true. Doors. That ended up opening all the doors for me. Wow. I love that. I, I, I think that example came up because that's, the, that's an exact example of the practicality mm. of the kingdom. And how that can look as a solution, which is a very broad solution, fatherlessness, which has a lot of implications and a lot of different contexts, but yet one simple and powerful kingdom framework for it. Come on. (laughs) That's goodness. I love that. So I'm curious, well, what what are you mostly up to now? I know you still have your UN credentials and you're still doing government stuff, but you also have like school of kingdom and you've got, you've got your hands in a handful of things. So what's the the majority of dub time looking like right now. Yeah. I like that dub time. (laughs) Hashtag dub time. time. So uh, a few years ago, I was hanging out with Dano and he said, you know, dub, it's really cool how you sit with Kings of the earth, but would you rather sit with a King of the earth once a week, or would you rather raise up thousands who sit with Kings daily? And I'm about impact, right? Like for me, Jesus already won everything. We're not even in a battle. We show up to enforce the victory of the king that he won on the cross. And so the kingdom, uh, you know, as it says in Isaiah, for unto us a son is given and the government is upon his shoulders, that government being the kingdom, the increase of his kingdom, government and peace, there will be no end, right? So I know that we've already won, but I want to win as quickly as possible. I want to experience all the benefits of Jesus' victory as quickly as possible. Yes, I'm about impact. So I was like, man, I'd rather raise up thousands who sit with kings daily. So he said, well, you need to start a school and teach people what you know and how you do what you do. And he, he's like very casual about it. We're eating lunch. He just goes back to eating lunch. So I was like, all right, man, I'm, you know, I'm going to do it. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> again, here's another arena where God has called me to do something and I am lacking in a skill set, right? Yes. I grew up in an Amish-ish cult, right? Now I have to start an online school, right? So I have to learn how to use Zoom, learn how to you know, do Facebook groups and like all the different technological things. And so uh, I immersed myself in that. And uh, you know, the first year I had School of Kingdom, I had 12 students because I'm very Jesus-like and uh, one betrayed <laughs> me, but it's fine. I'm fine. And uh, <laughs> And then uh, the next year had 65, the next year had 175. Currently, we've got 348 uh, students in School of Kingdom. We've got School of Kingdom Australia, School of Kingdom South Africa as well. Oh, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, I'm just leveraging uh, what it is that I've learned, earned, and inherited on behalf of other kingdom people to, uh, to help unlock within them what it means to be a prophetic kingdom reformer and yeah. to show up with uh, the ability to pull prophetic intel, partner with apostolic intelligence, and implement true kingdom reformation in the cities, in the uh, systems of the world. Yeah. Uh, so that mankind can experience the goodness of God. That's so good. Which reminds me, I have a total introduction I need to do after this podcast. So I will do that now. Also, <laughs> thank God for also, editing. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not editing that either. <laughs> 
we're just rolling. <laughs> so listen, what I'm curious about is because I'm always talking about how like I live life in the stretch, like guys always stretching me in mm. some way, some capacity, because in order to experience his best, there's always growth, right? There's progression oh. in him. And I'm curious to know in this season of your life and work, what are the areas that are that are your current stretches? Where's God like putting his finger on and growing you the most in this season? That's a fantastic question. So I'm uh, currently in the midst of developing a specific teaching that I'm calling the fivefold reformer and recognizing the gifts of the fivefold and how they are supposed to be in operation within the saints uh, for the sake of the world, not just within the church for the sake of the saints, right? And so that, uh, that prophetic gifting, that's all about conception. Uh, the apostolic gifting is about creation. And we see this in, in the story of, of, of God in the Bible, right? Where our first insight into a conversation amongst the Godhead, amongst the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who have existed eternally, uh, you know, as three persons in one being, and they are conceptualizing, uh, man, let us create mankind in our likeness and image and let them have dominion. So we're yes. seeing the idea, the prophetic conception of something that is existing in an unseen realm that they will manifest apostolically into a seen realm. Yes. For me, the working definition of an apostle is one who builds a structure and then stewards the culture within that structure. Yes. And so God shifts from a prophetic conception into an apostolic creation in forming man's body out of the dirt and then breathing his breath of life into that structure, putting the culture of divinity within the structure of humanity. Come on, somebody. I'm about to. I'm like, I'm like, preach, right don't now. preach. <laughs> I'm going to cue up the organ. I'm, I'm going to take it off for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and so. Uh, and then he shifts into that pastoral role. And the pastoral for me is the grace uh, to walk in patience and kindness with people as they become yeah. who it is that they were meant to be. And we see that with God walking in the garden in the cool of the day with the man and the woman who he called them, Adam. So as he's walking with Adam, I, I love how Adam names the animals. And I'm like, I, I was like, Lord, why is he naming the animals? Like, there's got to be something hidden here. And so as I went into that story, the Hebrew word for name there specifically means to read, to call out, to recite, and to proclaim. And that's the original intent of parenting. Our number one goal as parents should be to read the identity, purpose, and destiny in our children, call it out of them, recite it back to them until they know it, own it, and operate from it, yeah. then to proclaim it so the world receives them correctly. Yeah. And so even in him walking with Adam in the cool of the day and having Adam name the animals, he was preparing Adam for parenthood, right? And so that's that pastoral grace, the kindness and the patience and the development and then, of course, the fall happens. And so Jesus comes as an evangelist. I've come to preach the good news. And then uh, 40 days after the resurrection, he's teaching his disciples about the kingdom, right? So there's the yes. fivefold right there. So wow. what does it look like in our lives in a right. practical application? And so for me, you know, the idea for School of Kingdom came prophetically. Apparently, yes. I wasn't listening. So God had to send it through Dano, right? Like, hey, <laughs> Hey, buddy, hey, however you can get it to you, it's all good. <laughs> yes. Then I shifted into the apostolic intelligence piece. I, I developed the skills that were necessary for me to produce School of Kingdom. Right. Then I had to shift into the pastoral grace because, you know, when you're prophesying to presidents of nations and then you start a school and there's 12 students, that's not necessarily satisfying, right? Like, I'm <laughs> like, I'm going to change the world. I know Jesus did it with 12, but, you know, I feel like I need a few more. So, I had to apprehend and implement the pastoral grace in my life for myself and yes. my own personal development and for the entity of what School of Kingdom is. And, you know, we've got 348 this year. I'm like, hey, it's multiplication only in the kingdom. So I've yeah. got to get at least 700 this there next year. There you go. And so that's going to require the evangelistic grace, which has to do with the captivation of the interest of others. And yes. so- that's really what the Lord is stretching me in right now, marketing and, and evangelist you know, dub. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and learning how to discern like, yes, within all of the intelligence and wisdom that we can learn from secular marketing, 
How do we pull out what isn't kingdom? How do we keep what is kingdom? How do we implement prophetic kingdom revelation on marketing that hasn't yes. been apprehended yet? And uh, so that's really where the Lord is stretching me right now. Um, I've, with my own personality, I'm, I'm very pragmatic and I, I hate over-promising, under-delivering all of those things. And so, right. uh, you know, in the marketing realm, there's in the secular uh, arena that there's a lot of that going on, you know, a so whole lot of that going on. Uh, so I've never even marketed before for School of Kingdom. It's just grown organically. But the Lord's like, hey, buddy, you want thousands in there? You're going to have to learn how to market the kingdom way, right? So that's yes. really where the Lord is stretching me right now. That's super good. Have you already started the process of marketing School of Kingdom? Or are you still sitting with God on your strategy on how your approach is, what your approach is going to look like? So I have implemented some uh, kingdom grassroots, especially over this last year. Um, the Lord asked me last year when I was talking to the Lord, I was like, okay, God, like I see I'm, I'm ke- beginning to catch your vision for school yes. of kingdom. Uh, what must I do to make that happen? And he asked me, he said, uh, what is it that you learned in the music industry that you're not leveraging for school of kingdom? And I was like, oh, man, you know, when I was in the music scene, you know, we'd make swag, you know, uh, merchandise and I'd go on tour and he was like, <laughs> you know, well, why aren't you doing that? So. <laughs> I began to do these tours. I just got back from one actually where we did, uh, I think it was, uh, man, I think it was like seven days, nine meetings, six states, right? Okay. Just uh, doing the tour and talking about School of Kingdom. And, you know, I've got some cool shirts and stuff that <laughs> we're starting to sell with hashtags and stuff on them and uh, just implementing that. And then uh, our good friend, uh, Julia Winston, uh, has helped me learn how to do challenges and and so, uh, you know, I've got a, a challenge that's coming up. And okay. Uh, so, yeah, it's starting to, and, and I've got to a come lot together. More. Yeah, it's starting to come together. I'm starting to implement it. I know there's more. And yes. uh, you were even kind enough to send me some, uh, <laughs> some feedback and insight on that. I super appreciate that. Absolutely. And the more in that arena is coming. And uh, so, yeah, yes. I'm going that's after good it. stuff, man. First of all, can I, I, have to, I have to point this out. I love how I asked you what your current stretch is nine guests out of 10 would have just gone right to listen lord right now has me in marketing not dub though dub is like listen i got this five fold this five fold bottle and framework and walk no listen there was a whole word just in that part of just walking out the word and how that word has practically shown up in your life the five fold around mm. school of kingdom that by itself Y'all, that by itself, if you didn't catch that, just just hit the, you know, 30 seconds back a few times and listen to that again, because that was a whole word for a lot of people who are listening to understand what that looks like for Mm -hmm. you and to recognize the season that you are currently in with what you're doing in the marketplace. Dude, that was good, man. I'm telling you, nine out of 10, it was just about, listen, right now, my stretch is marketing. No, 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 not dub. Not evangelist, dub, not prophet, <laughs> apostle, teacher, you Hilarious. know, you know, I l- listen, this was really, really good. Really, Thank really you, good. Friend. I appreciate that. Yeah. Super good. How do people connect more with what you're up to? Where do they go? Yeah. So uh, I know this is kind of becoming the older generation's place, but you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm super available on Facebook. Uh, you can go to schoolofkingdom.com. And then, uh, you know, School of Kingdom on all of the platforms, you know, uh, Instagram and, uh, you know, all the things. That I'm, You're on TikTok. I, I'm ex-Amish, right? I'm on TikTok even, right? <laughs> Wait, I'm not you gonna are lie. on TikTok? I had to hire somebody to make that happen okay. for me. I was like, my Amishness is too deep rooted. No, but, <laughs> but on all the platforms, you're able to start catching these little mini videos. I call yeah. them heavy revies, uh, heavy just revies. 30 second that. to 90 second uh, kingdom revelations. And so yeah. whatever your favorite social media platform is, you can search school of kingdom and start, uh, you know, uh, getting to uh, engage and implement these, uh, these kingdom revelations, because it's all about, how are we as prophetic kingdom reformers going to advance the kingdom in practical ways as quickly as possible? Uh, because I'm, man, I'm just full of hope. Like you can't get me down. Like the worst thing you can do for other people is drop me in a room full of down and outers that are like yeah. the whole world's going to hell in a handbasket. It's getting yes. dark out there, brother. Cause I'm like, Jack, you ain't met the kingdom yet. The <laughs> kingdom <it>. is constantly <laughs> advancing. So you need to, you know, 
fix your lenses and yes. figure out where is the kingdom advancing because it's advancing somewhere. And yes. so how are we going to partner with that? The world is getting better. Life is getting better and the kingdom is advancing. So how can we be a part of it? Let's go. Let's go, dude. I knew this was going to be a fun chat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate you so much. Hey, thank you for having me, my friend. I had a great time and uh, I look forward to partnering with you and in kingdom advancement and all it. forms of ways in the future. Let's go. That's it. More to come. Now, that was a really great chat with Dove Alexander. Mr. Bynes, CEO of Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur, and my dear husband is here with us. What's going on, Phil? I'm, I'm doing well, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not freestyling on your birthday. <laughs> you were in the spirit because I promise you I was about to ask you. Whether you wanted to add some more bars. Uh, nah, sis. <laughs> okay. Okay. I was going to give you the stage, give you the opportunity, you know. Okay. All right. Well, so instead of, you know, putting out some bars, how about you give us some takeaways? I can give you some takeaways. I, I probably had about seven or eight from, from um, Dub, but a lot of them were personal takeaways from myself. So I'm just going to stick to the ones that I think will benefit other people. How about okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. And so let's see. The first one I have here is when you hit a place in which your spiritual giftings go to the next level, it is an indication that you are or you have entered into your metron, which means measure of rule. I was like, that is good. Yeah. You know, that's that's one way you can you can see where God wants you to be. Like when you hit that place and your spiritual giftings, let's say you prophesy, you're a prophet and all of a sudden you're prophesying at a higher level, man, you know, you're a teacher, all of a sudden you're teaching at a higher level. That, that is, that is awesome. Right. Where you're seeing, where you're seeing how God's moving in particular contexts, and you start to see these patterns and it's like, oh, wow. Like God's doing something in the midst of this right here. Mm -hmm. That's different. Yeah. 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 That's good. And the, the second one I have here is favor versus force. So favor puts you in the room. Force will let you walk into any room you want and stay there. It allows you to stay there. Yeah. So this one was so interesting. So for me, because you know how I flow, you know, so it was funny because we were having this conversation when you said force, I almost had like a little internal reaction, like, where's he headed with this force thing, you know? And as I was listening to him, I'm like, ah, that makes so much sense. It's uh, the word I would have put around that if, as I was processing through that, I'm like, yes, it's like authority. When he was talking about that force, that force factor, it's just like, it's just that authority, which is different. It didn't mean that you pushed your way into places you're not supposed to be, but it's just that authority that you carry. That's not where he was headed at all. And I'm saying that just in case someone thought that that's what they heard, because that's not what mm -hmm. he said. <laughs> yep. So we can change you know how this. Entrepreneurs can be. <laughs> that's right. So we can I'm change kick this, this thing down. They're going to see me and I'm a stick. <laughs> we can change this on my end from saying favor versus force then to favor versus authority. How favor about versus that? authority. All right. <laughs> and that's good. <laughs> We're Let's verbally see. engineering that word for the kingdom. That's, of the that's right. <laughs> verbally engineering it. <laughs> and let's so see the, la the last one I have here is when we provide practical kingdom solutions to the world, it is another way to operate in the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah, man. So yeah. good. It's like, it's like, how did he say it? It's because we're bringing solutions. We're inviting people into the goodness of, of God. Right. Yeah. And that, and that when they have, when they taste the goodness of God, they want more. Yeah. Right. And that's why that's like the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. So, so good. I really, really enjoyed this conversation with Deb. It was fun and it was refreshing and and it was, you know, there were so many good things. There's so many good perspectives, I think, that he dropped in the midst of this conversation that were just like, oh, that's some good stuff to chew on. So, uh, Dub, if you're listening, thanks. It was good. I enjoyed oh, it. Oh, I got a message for Dub, too. What's Dub, that? next time you come on the podcast and you want to be dropping all a bunch of jewels, you better make sure that you um, send some notes over, too, <laughs> so, so that we can so we don't miss all the jewels that you laid out there. OK. So Phil wants some help. He, he, he's trying to cheat on his takeaways for the next round when we have you on the podcast. Uh, all right. For all of you listening, if you want to connect more with the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Movement, 
head over to kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com slash connect so you can get access to all the resources that we have to really help you to grow in doing business and partnership with God so you experience his best and have a greater kingdom impact through the work that you do in the marketplace. We'd be delighted to connect with you, share more uh, resources with you, and just grow with you because God's doing something so awesome in the earth. And we have the privilege of partnering with him. So Mr. Vines, anything you want to add? Um, I can't. No, I'm going to leave it alone. Before, <laughs> Phil, Phil was about to preach another message. So he's no, like, I wasn't going <laughs> to preach another message. I wasn't going to preach another message. I was I was going to um, you know what let me just sing it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shay, sunshine, and whatever else I like to call you. Happy birthday to you and many more. <laughs> and if y'all want to send my awesome wife something, where where can they send it to? <laughs> oh, seriously. See, that's the part I wasn't going to say. But since I saw happy birthday, they got blessed. And so they need to send a blessing to. No, sure. I'll leave it alone. OK, okay. never mind. <laughs> you have to find it yourself. Then I, I like to make my wife uncomfortable like this. You know, she don't like to be like, oh, you can send me an offering here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, love you all. We will talk to you more next week on the next episode of the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. Take care and God bless. Be blessed. Thanks for joining us on the Kingdom Driven Entrepreneur Podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard today, we encourage you to subscribe and spread the word. And don't forget, you can gain access to even more resources, plus a thriving community of fire starters by visiting our website at kingdomdrivenentrepreneur.com. 